my beloved mother always told her four children, make your mess your message. Well, for much of this past year, I felt like my life was a complete mess. But tonight, I am so grateful to be back and doing well. And I want to share with you what I've learned. I've met some amazing people along the way. They've given me courage and filled my heart. Ultimately, they taught me the true meaning of home. Whether it was a hospital room, my native Gulf Coast, or this TV studio. So I hope you'll come with me as I take you on an incredible journey that started exactly a year ago. Until you come home, I have been waiting 174 days to say this, good morning, America. You never really get to see the patterns of your journey or understand the meaning. I'm back! <laughs> Just when you thought it was safe. I beat breast cancer in 2007. Good morning! Oh, why well, looky there. Five years later, I was covering one of my favorite annual assignments. Welcome once again to Oscars Red Carpet Live. And had no idea I was about to be tested like never before. And I'll see you inside. People didn't realize, but I did, how exhausted I was. This was a bone weary exhaustion, difficult to focus, difficult to concentrate. And at that moment, I said, you know, I'm really going to, I'm going to see my doctor right away. Since I was diagnosed with breast cancer and underwent chemotherapy, I have grown accustomed to getting tested, but this was different. I went to see this specialist toward the end of March, and that was the first time I heard MDS. And I was like, I have, I have MS? No, MDS. And he spelled it out for me, myelodysplastic syndrome. It was completely foreign to me. And I did the thing that we tell people not to do. I went on the internet and I had a reaction that, um, man, I just started crying. I just, whoo. Telling my family was the hardest part, especially sharing the news with my mom, who was ill. It was very difficult to call my mom. I'm the baby. I'd already put them through <clears throat> quite a bit with my breast cancer journey. With these two, magic is I kept it all going on the air. Bofur, Bofur. But on the inside, I was in turmoil. Ironically, at the very same time, Good Morning America reached an historic high point, becoming the number one morning show after 852 weeks. When people see this picture, they don't see it the same way I see it. Because on that same date is when I got the official diagnosis for MDS. So GMA number one, we have a big party that night, and that's what it was like for me, April 19th, 2012. Soon the reality of my diagnosis became more clear. On the computer, there was a graph, and there was one year, two years, and a dot in the middle. And the doctor kept pointing to that dot in the middle between one year and two years. And I, and I said, what's that? And the doctor said, if you don't do anything, that is your life expectancy. And I'm like, oh. I'm away from the office for quite a few hours. And I turn on my Blackberry and my phone. There were several messages and calls from the office. And I remember calling Ben Sherwood from the car. And he said, you're interviewing the president tomorrow at the White House. And I'm like, um, oh, OK. Oh, okay. And I said, Ben, very excited. Can I get back to you? I'll call you back. I remember putting the phone down and I remember thinking, that is so strange. Something's going on. There's something going on. Hello, Mr. President. You're How's... messing up your mom. That's okay. Again, no one knows all these things that are going on and, you know, sit down and ask the president 
um, are you still, still opposed, opposed to same-sex same marriage? He makes his historic that, response. Uh, I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Here, Mickey and Minnie are here too. Shh. Okay. All I could really think about was finding a bone marrow match. Immediately, I reached out to my sisters, Dorothy and Sally Ann. But would one of them be a match when only 30% of siblings are? So many people in this country depend on donations from strangers, hoping for a match like the one I would get. It's extremely humbling. So I am just filled with gratitude. After an agonizing wait, my prayers were answered. Sally Ann was a perfect match. It's very hard for me to accept. I'm used to being the giver, not used to receiving, but it's a great gift. It's a great gift. Thank you, Jesus. My daughter Judith said, so many people, Mom, wonder what their purpose is in life, and now you know your purpose. Your purpose is to give bone marrow to your sister Robin. You were born for this. Now I could begin my preparation for a bone marrow transplant, a daunting series of daily chemotherapy sessions to wipe out my entire immune system so it can be built back from scratch with new life from Sally Ann stem cells. That after you recover from transplant, you actually may get her allergies. You actually will get her blood type. You won't get her taste for music. <laughs> <laughs> promises, promises. promises yeah. Yeah. But I also knew I had reached the point where I could no longer keep my diagnosis a secret from the public. How would I tell the viewers? And how would I do it while something else in my personal life was falling apart? <laughs>